document 1201 events of slash slash 20 comma area 1201 forward, recorded incidents and observation of the manifestation of SCP-1201-2. The entity was questioned alongside researchers keeping pace with the movement of the entity on a pre-constructed motion track. The entity was visible for 15 seconds before disappearing with Agent Sanders into SCP-1201. SCP-1201-2 manifests 40 meters from SCP-1201. Subject appears covered in a viscous pink fluid, with mild burns covering the body. SCP-1201-2 appears to regenerate to typical appearance in the space of 12.3 seconds before righting itself and sprinting toward SCP-1201. Agent Sanders attempts communication. SCP-1201-2, you again, there, boss. How do you fucking do? Agent Sanders, your compliance with testing protocol would be greatly appreciated. SCP-1201-2, sure about that? Sure you ain't gonna fuck everything up? Agent Sanders. Yes. SCP-1201, you better not be a fucking noob. SCP-1201-2 grabs Agent Sanders by the right leg and disappears into SCP-1201. In log document 1201 colon personal notes there was no sign of any place where we could have arrived, no entrance, no device for travel. I checked my pulse, felt along my skin, slightly elevated heartbeat, and I was mildly warm. I would have to say that at that time I was also fairly distressed, so I apologize for any inaccuracies in advance. After the entity released my leg and dropped me I found myself on the surface of a very small, empty, rocky planet. The sun was at least three times as large in the sky, if it was the sun we know of. I would not be surprised if it was Mercury, although this thought was briefly quelled as I could see what appeared to be a large, flaming serpent making loops in the distance on the sun's surface. Strangely enough I did not have trouble breathing or staring directly into the sun, and I was not at all affected by the intense heat. When questioned, 1201-2 responded with it's just fucking atmosphere. When questioned if this was the place it always returned to when SCP-1201-2 entered the well, it responded that would be lame as fuck. 1201-2 appeared to be running in place for a few brief moments before the next event happened. I found that I could not advance either. When questioned I was told that it's fucking countdown. So, I remain walking in place as 1201-2 was doing. I fell forward on my face after hearing a large crystalline chime, and 1201-2 began laughing and issued a slur of insults before disappearing far ahead of me. When I got my footing, I found that moving was rather effortless and I was running at about three times as fast as I normally can. The experience was quite exhilarating if you don't mind me saying. I asked it where we were going. It told me that we gotta find Beth and kill that bitch. Like you, I wasn't entirely sure who Beth was or why 1201-2 wanted to kill it, so I just continued running alongside 1201-2. In time I could see an enormous black mass of tentacles floating in the distance. I asked 1201-2 what it was and it told me it was fucking cheap as shit. When I asked to clarify the specific nature of the entity, 1201-2 told me it's just fucking overpowered. So, being a bit hesitant, I slowed down a bit and let 1201-2 take the lead. When we got a bit closer, it spoke. I'm not sure I can recall its exact words, but it kept referring to 1201-2 as its bitch and that he sucked so bad. 1201-2 was visibly upset, and told it that it should make the first move. That's when the entity, which I'm assuming to be 1201-3, advanced on 1201-2 and began whipping its tentacles wildly at it. The motions themselves were peculiar in the sense that each separate attack by 1201-2, and 1201-3 did not differ in motion in the least bit, and was accompanied by a matching cry. 
I'm fairly certain I saw 1,212 instantly right itself about four times after being struck by the tentacles. Yeah, right. After that it. 1,212 told me I'm getting low, fucking help me you fucking noob. Which I have to say was completely nonsensical because he had just allowed the thing to attack him in the first plot. I'm sorry I'm getting off track here. 1,212 retreated froze in place, and begun glowing in a green light. I was forced to attack the entity myself or run from it as its attention was now turned to me. I was caught off guard momentarily by a blinding light emanating from 12013's center, and unable to move for one reason or another. 1212 told me that if I wasn't a fucking noob, I could glitch stuns. I'm not entirely sure what he was referring to but after one or two seconds I could move again. That's when one of its tentacles pierced through me. I saw an explosion of gore from my chest, but I felt absolutely no pain whatsoever, and the gore itself disappeared into the air. After seeing this I was a bit more motivated to approach 1201-3 and speak to it as I was sure it could not harm me. I continued running toward the creature, trying to ignore the circling clouds of tentacles and gore around my body. I asked it what it was, but there was no response. It seemed rather focused on attacking me. After a short time I started moving more slowly and I could hear a loud, heartbeat sound in my head. I could see 1212 circling in on it from behind out of the corner of my eye. The heartbeat noise in my head was deafeningly loud at that point, and I could barely move, and that's when I heard 1212's voice yell you lost, bitch, followed by 1212 exploding. A voice, the location it was produced from I cannot speak.